welcome all you lovely people. So, if you're like me, you absolutely love the way blooms look. They're gorgeous. But if you're not overly inclined to want to go out and buy a lot of house paint and polycrylic and other ingredients that you might not have on hand as a fluid artist. So I've been really interested in developing, I know some people will say these aren't true blooms, but a bloom-like effect uses the fewest and most easy to find ingredients. Okay, let's talk about paint mixing. Now there's only three things that you're going to need to mix your paint with. Your base color and all of your other colors are going to be mixed with Floetrol, regular American Floetrol and water. And then your cell activator is going to be mixed with Elmer's Glue All. And this has already been diluted 70-30 with water. And my hope with this is that I can teach you uh, not just give you a recipe, but actually teach you the elements you need to understand to make the process work. So that even if we mix our paint differently, you'll still be able to figure out on your own a way to make this process work. So I'm going to show you a way to test your thicknesses. When I mix this, I do my base color, which is white, and the colors that I'm going to use are all mixed to the same thickness. I know sometimes you'll hear that they say to make your base color thicker, but I've found that making it the same thickness as your other colors uh, works well for me. And then your cell activator, which is the only one that will be mixed with the Elmer's glue all is going to be just a little bit thinner. Now I'll put some dots of these out on paper and this is a good way to test your thicknesses because you want to make sure that your thicknesses for your base and all your colors are consistent as in they're all the same and then your cell activator is a bit thinner. So I'm going to put about three drops of each So try to get your little puddles all the same size, tilt your paper up, and we should hopefully see the first four uh, dripping down to about the same place, and your fifth one, your cell activator, should be coming down just a little bit farther because it should be just a little bit thinner. Mm, it's not a big difference. They're all pretty close. And for doing my blowout today, I'm going to be using my mini leaf blower, which I really like for this process. It does a really good job of blowing the cell, cell activator sorry, and the colors over the base. Okay, now I'm going to shift into voiceover mode and show you how I prep my setup. Now, for blooms, I really like uh, spinning them out. I just find that I've seen people tilt them, but especially when you're doing the no house paint method, it's just really, really easy to ruin the shape, the nice shape that you've created with your blowout, if you're trying to tilt 
your blooms. So I definitely recommend getting something so you can spin them out. This is just um, an inexpensive plastic cake turntable from Amazon. Uh, it works just fine for this. I like to cover the surface in saran wrap for easy to clean up. Um, that's an optional step. And the other thing that I like to use when I'm spinning, this is a new find for me. This is a collapsible kitty or puppy pool. This one I think is 36 inches and it's actually just the perfect size for doing your spins and it keeps all of the mess contained. So pop that in there and now the last thing I do is uh, for today's purposes I'm testing my blooms out on these little circular wooden panels that I happen to find at my local Dollarama. Um, I just popped a roll of duct tape under there to raise it up a little bit off of the surface because um, these aren't mounted wood panels, they're flat, but uh, you can use whatever you think is appropriate for the setup you've got. So I'm starting with my base color. This is the Artist Loft Titanium White mixed with equal parts of Floetrol and water. I've often heard it said that you need to use specific brands, usually Amsterdam, of titanium white for this process to work, uh, especially in your cell activator, but I haven't actually found that to be the case. You want to start with a fairly ample sized uh, spot of paint, um, just so you don't have to have it stretched too much to cover your canvas. And then I like to pop my bubbles. And I'm going to start with my first base color, which is the Artist Loft Cobalt Blue. And this is a metallic. Beautiful color. One of my favorites. Now another thing to note with blooms, especially no house paint blooms, is you're definitely going to help yourself out by using um, at least one, I like to use two, metallic colors and I'll often sandwich a non-metallic in between them. But I just find that metallic colors in general are more reactive, they're more likely to create cells and lacing, their pigments are heavier. Um, so yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. And the middle color, sorry, was uh, dioxazine purple again from Liquitex and now I am adding the metallic copper, which is again Artist Loft brand. And those colors, the same as the base, are mixed with equal parts Floetrol and water. And as you can see, my paint is not too thick. It's on the thinner side. It's definitely probably about um, just leaving barely a trace when I put it down. And last but not least, our cell activator, which is equal parts Artist Loft Titanium White, Glue All Mix, and water. Now, here's probably one of the most important tips. If you've mixed your paint correctly, you should start to see a halo around your cell activator. A little outline where the white appears to be sort of mixing with the color around it. The way you blow out your paint is another really important part of this process. So you want to begin by blowing down onto the center of your cell activator and then gently blowing it across the surface of the color. You don't want to blow too vigorously or too far out. You want to leave a layer of translucent white over top of that color. You want to be able to sort of see the color underneath showing through the white a little bit. That's when you know you've blown it out the right amount. If you have a heavy spot in the center where there's still some thick white sitting that you can't really see any color underneath, you can blow down, straight down onto that. Now another really important step is after you've done this blowout, you need to wait a good 15 to 20 minutes for your paint to return back to the center. Now I've put my camera on a 15 minute time lapse, so what you just saw was about 15 to 20 minutes of letting the paint develop and come back to the center. Now I'm adding a little bit of white uh, a little bit more white around the outside of my blowout just to make it even easier for your bloom to stretch to the edges of your canvas. 
and if you've gotten a bit off center like I have you can just tilt a little bit try to get your bloom as close as possible to center before you start to spin so the next step is to spin out your bloom So while I continue to spin mine out, I'm going to talk a little bit more about why it's so important to give your bloom that 15 to 20 minute rest period after you blow it out. So when you blow down, the paint in the center gets blown out towards the edges and you'll be left with an indentation that you'll be able to see in the center. While you wait, not only does it give time for your cell, ac cell activator to work and to develop the bloom, it also allows your paint to move back towards center. Now if you don't do that, your bloom will be sort of stuck in the center. So if you try especially to tilt it, um, your design will get all messed up because your edges will move and your center will not. So definitely give it that rest period before you start to spin or tilt. I'll be putting the mixing ratios for my paint in the description, so if anybody's interested in knowing the actual amounts when I mix my paint, um, those will be there for you. As well, uh, we'll put links to my Amazon Influencer account, so if anyone's interested in seeing the links to where I found some of the tools and products that I use in this video, uh, such as the mini leaf blower, um, then you can check my links for that. If you choose to purchase through one of my Amazon affiliate links, um, I get a small percentage at no extra cost to you and it is greatly appreciated. And that's it. I'll zoom in and let you have a closer look. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and joining me today. If you enjoyed it, please remember to like, follow, and share. All these things help me to be able to keep bringing you these tutorials. And please let me know in the comments if you tried it and if it worked for you. I'd love to know how it went. Hope to see you next time.